Well, again, good morning, friends. So last week, if you were here with us last week, you might remember that I mentioned that over the, the month of October, I'm going to be asking the question, does it matter? Uh, more specifically, does church matter? And so today we're going to delve into that, uh, that question a little bit more. And I hope that you realize that as we sit here in a church building, uh, that the church paid for and bought, that uh, the pastor of that church is asking the question, does church matter? I hope that you realize that the answer in this situation is probably going to be yes, right? I mean, right, we're there. But I hope that we also realize that it's really easy for us to kind of lock ourselves within these brick walls and to kind of live within a cocoon of this place when we ask that question. And I hope that today we'll be able to answer that question, not from this sealed cocoon in which we find ourselves in today, but in this larger context of does church matter? Does it matter to the world in which we live beyond these four walls, beyond just this community? So I've mentioned a, a couple of times, one of the most pivotal, life-changing experiences I had, not only as a person, but as a pastor, was uh, about uh, 12 years ago, uh, actually about 10 years ago, uh, our Pacific Northwest Annual Conference invited me and my wife and really our whole family to start a new church in Vancouver. And I use the word invite loosely because we don't really get invited in the United Methodist system. I was told that I was going to be starting a new church in Vancouver. But it was a, a, an amazing experience. In Vancouver, when we were starting this, in the Vancouver, Portland area, as we had this charge to begin a new congregation, I found out all kinds of things about not only how the church functions, but how the world outside the church functions, and how sometimes they fit together very conveniently, and sometimes they are worlds apart. One of the things that we had to, to think about, especially in the Portland area and the Vancouver area, was that the word church itself, at least in that community, had so much baggage, so much uh, hidden meanings in it for people that it wasn't even a word that we could use that we found constructive because there was so much baggage around a, a political structure that was behind it, around a judgmental idea that went behind it, and it just carried all this stuff. And so rather than telling people we were starting a new church, we had to use language like a community of faith or that we were not necessarily Christians but that we were disciples of Jesus because we had to deal with all of that luggage and all of that, that stuff that had been heaped on it. But as I was in that process of starting a church for people who usually don't like church or for people who had left the church, I had lots of interesting conversations. I found out very quickly that we, within the walls of the church, use the word church interchangeably for a lot of things, right? One thing I discovered is that we use, when we say church, we usually, about, I would say 90% of the time, are referring to a building. Right? A building somewhere on a corner like this one that has a uh, cross on top of it. In fact, we're so rooted in that idea that in our United Methodist structure, when we start a new church, the committee that's responsible for that is the district church location and building committee. Right? I mean, they are so linked together that it, you have to have a building plan, a physical building plan to start a church. That's where it comes from. And I hope that we know that a church is not just a building, but that's what we mean when we use that. And so I would have all kinds of conversations. One of the things that, that we talked about in the, the new church that we started in Vancouver was that we didn't uh, ever want to own property, which didn't make sense to anybody. It, it was kind of like a, uh, it just didn't compute for people. Every place that we met or people would ask, so where is your church? And I would say, well, we... We meet at uh, uh, Burgerville on Fridays, and we have a group that meets there, or we meet at McMinimins for Theology Pub, right? We do that on Thursday. And on Sunday, we have a worship gathering that takes place down at Clark College, down in the Student Union Building. We do that, but then we have a series of other, and we didn't own property. Everything we did, we did in public. And people would say, whoa, okay, great, but where's your church? Well, we meet at McMinimins on Wednesday, and we meet at, uh, so, so we, we have that baggage, right? The other thing that I found, at least in groups when we were talking about starting a new church, one of the things I found was that we use the word church interchangeably to mean a worship service, right? We're going to church. 
That means we show up someplace at Sunday at 9 o'clock or 10.30, right? We're, and, and church is this thing, right? Which still kind of revolves around this idea of being inside these walls and church is this thing that we do. And for most churches, at least almost every church that I've been involved in, I would say 90% of our effort, our emotional effort, our mental effort, our finances are all pointed at Sunday morning at 9 o'clock or 10.30. Now, having said that, I'm going to be totally honest with you. Kennewick First United Methodist Church is above average. Don't tell anybody. Just between you and me. I am so impressed that this church does so much work. Uh, I get emotional about it. Does so much work beyond Sunday morning. We spend a lot of time thinking about how do we be disciples? How do we bring about the kingdom of God beyond this place? Now, I understand that we spend a lot of time planning worship and that this is our main gathering and that there's a lot of effort that goes into it. But Kennewick First United Methodist Church is above average when it comes to the effort and the time that we spend dreaming about what we could be and how the kingdom of God could be in our midst in this community beyond here. And so I am so excited to be your pastor. When I found out that I was coming here, uh, they, they said, so take some time and talk to your family about it and let us know if this is something. I said, no, I'm going. I'm good. Let's go. I'm so thankful to be your pastor. So I'm excited for the days that, that are ahead of us. But I want to make sure that we don't retreat back into that place where we find ourselves in this sealed cocoon in which we think of ourselves as church being this building or church being this time that we come and we gather. Church is so much more than that. When we were first starting the, the, the church, I, uh, I mentioned last week, I spend a lot of time with sinners. And I was having, uh, we used to call it uh, a sinner's dinner. Uh, we were having fr- uh, dinner with some friends who didn't go to church and weren't really connected to church, but knew that I was a pastor. And I was hanging out with their kids, and we were playing uh, race cars and stuff on the floor, and the daughter pulled out her Barbies and stuff like that, and I was playing with them. And when she found out that I was pastor of a church, she said, I know a song about church. I said, great, what is it? And she said, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door and see all the people. I said, I know that song too. And before I could even say that, she interrupted me and she went to verse 2. And she said, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the doors, where's all the people? I wasn't ready for verse 2. But even within that, there was an underlying idea that the church wasn't the steeple or wasn't the building, but it was the people, right? Unfortunately, she had a second verse that someone had taught her that the building is empty. And I think that's something that we need to think about as well. But what is church? Does it matter? Is, is church just this, this building? Or is it just the, the time that we gather together for worship? If it's just the building, what does that mean? We'll talk about that next week. You know, the early church from the first century, back in the book of, of uh, Acts, when the first church was forming in Jerusalem, and, and for about 200 years after that in church history, you know, it took us about 200 years to start building buildings. People used to ask us when you're starting a new church, when are you going to build a building? And I'd say, well, when we've been around about 200 years, we'll start to think about it. It's not just buildings. It's not just the worship gathering that we come or the, the performance that takes place here. It's the community that gathers together. It's the community that bonds our lives together, right? It's a community of disciples who, who go on this journey. The, the scripture passages that we, that we heard this morning remind us that we are a community that helps one another along in the shortcomings and in the difficulties of this journey of faith that we share. That we are a community of, of people who want to be disciples of Jesus and hopefully want to see this kingdom of God appear now, today, at hand. Not just someday, right? So having said all of that about church, does it matter? 
Does that kind of church matter? Do our buildings matter? We'll talk about that more next week. Does this time of worship matter? We'll talk about that the week after. Does it matter? Does the church matter? I believe it does. Not just from this sealed cocoon that we are in, but I believe the church matters in the world. Does it matter that couples and families can come and they can bring infants to us for baptism? And a pastor can hold that child and ask you as a congregation, will you surround this child in a community of love and forgiveness and grace? Will you help them discover faith in God on their own? And you all shout back, we will. Does that matter? I mean, seriously, I'm asking, does it matter? Yes. Where else in the world does that happen? Where else in the world does a kid come in front of a, a group of 150 people and we say, we will pray for you, we will look out for you, we will help you discover the gifts that God has given you? It happens nowhere but here. It matters. Does it matter that every week you can come and write down a, a joy or a, a concern or something that you need help with and you can write it on a card and the pastor will tell a whole congregation about that concern. That someone will commit to talk to God about this. Does that matter? Yes, it does. In fact, I think prayer as a, a community, prayer is something that, that we so underutilize and that, that we have such kind of a, a, a strange idea about it. But prayer is an important thing, so much so that this morning I'm going to be starting something different. I talked with Cynthia, who's in charge of our, our prayer teams, and I was saying, how can, how can this prayer time that we do not only in worship, but just in the life of our church, how could it be different? How could it be a, something that connects people to a community that cares about them and loves them? And so as we brainstormed, we, we came up with this idea, and we'll be starting it today, that after each of our worship services, after the 9 o'clock worship service and after the 10.30 worship service, There'll be somebody over in the, the chapel, right off the side of this sanctuary. If you have something that you would like somebody to pray with you about, there will be somebody there to pray with you. If maybe it was difficult for you to, to write out on the cards uh, uh, what, what that prayer request is, you can go over there. They can help you fill out that card so that as a church we can be joining with you and praying with you. But it is so important that we are connected together as a group of disciples that care for one another. And so this morning, between, uh, after the 9 o'clock service, Naomi McDermott is going to be over there, and she's going to be willing to, to pray with you if you'd like to have somebody pray with you. If you hang around for the 1030 service, uh, Cookie Graham is going to be there after the, the uh, service uh, at 1030, and she'll be there to pray with you. And I'm hoping, or I'm not hoping, there is no try, there is only do, right? <laughs> we will have somebody there to pray with us. If you need somebody to pray with you about a celebration or a joy, if you need somebody to pray with you about a concern or a worry, we'll have somebody there as part of this community. Because it matters, right? It matters that we are, are part of a, a, a community that, that lives together and grows together. I was talking with some people this last week about the, the commitment that we make when we become members of the church. And uh, it just kind of rolls off my tongue at this point. We, we make a commitment to uh, support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And when I said that, people in my office said, witness? What's witness? I don't know, witness. You were one of them, so quit laughing, right? <laughs> witness? What's witness? Well, about 15 years ago, in our, our, our book of worship and the things that we want people to be committed to as they become members of uh, a United Methodist Church was not only their prayers and their presence, their gifts and their service, but their witness. That means what we do outside the walls of this church. 
Those other four kind of deal with our cocoon that we have here, right? But the witness is the thing that says, will you be a disciple of Jesus that works for the transformation of the world when you leave this place? I hope we will, because it matters. And I totally understand that we are different people inside here than we are when we walk out the doors. I get that. I understand that. I'm your pastor, and I'm different when I leave this place. I don't speak in loud voices. I don't wear suits very often. I don't use big churchy words when I'm talking to other people. I understand there's a difference there. When Jennifer and I were heading back from seminary, we stopped in Kansas to, um, uh, to have some, meet some friends that Jennifer had met in school. And I was playing with their kids. I, whenever I go to dinner, I always end up playing with the kids. I don't know what that is about. But I was playing with the kids, and they had two daughters. And they didn't know I was a pastor or anything. They just uh, knew that, that I was a friend of their mom and dad's. And so they brought the Barbies out, and I showed Barbie how to fix the Corvette, right? Because I wanted to make sure that Barbie didn't get stranded anywhere. And so we, we played with the Barbies and things like that. And then when the time for bed came, uh, they said, can Mark say uh, our prayers with us upstairs? And I said, sure, I, I would love to. And so I went up, they got tucked into their bed, and their mom and dad was there, and Jennifer was there, and I was there. And, and so I didn't know that I was actually like in charge of prayers. I just thought I was going to be a passive uh, listener to prayers. But they were in bed, and uh, we kind of all bowed our heads, and they said, okay, Mark, you pray. So I prayed, and when I was done praying, one of the little girls goes, you pray like a pastor. <laughs> so I guess it does kind of translate outside these four walls, right? I'm not sure what she meant by that. I chose to take it as a positive. Uh, I'm not sure that she meant it that way, but I chose to take it that way. But it matters. Our witness matters. Those things do matter. When I first moved to Kennewick, I want to make sure I've got time for the story. Yeah, when I first moved to Kennewick, uh, I was kind of reconnecting with some friends that I hadn't seen since high school who still live here in the Tri-Cities because I hadn't really lived here since I, I left for college. And I was uh, going out to dinner with some, uh, some friends, and as we were talking about things and all the things that have happened in town since I left, and one of them, half-joking, said, in two minutes or less, tell me why I should be a member of your, or why I should join your church. And he was kind of half joking, and I think I caught him by surprise because I got really serious all of a sudden. And I don't think he was expecting a serious answer. And I said, well, if you want to just join a church, where well, I'm not really interested. If you want just a club to join, or if you just want to come and passively consume what we have, if you want to join that old language of just joining a church, I got better things to do. But... If you want to come and make a covenant relationship with a group of people who are striving to be disciples of Jesus, and if you want to walk with us in that journey of faith, if you want to do all that you can to see the kingdom of God appear at hand, if you want to hear the message of, of justice and mercy and joy and love in the community, if you want to worship God, if you want to grow in your spiritual faith, if you want to make friends that will last a lifetime in this journey, then I'll pick you up. But if you want to just join a church, if you want to just join something, we got better things to do. That doesn't matter. But boy, being disciples that make a difference, not only in our lives, but in the world, that matters. Being part of a community that shares the kingdom of God that doesn't happen just someday, but happens now. Being disciples that gather together and celebrate and worship like this matters. Growing in our spiritual lives and helping one another connect with God and find God in the peace and the hope that comes in that relationship, that matters. Serving the world because Jesus came to serve and working for justice and compassion and joy and love outside the walls of these churches, that matters. Making friends that last a lifetime, that support one another when we are hurting and when we are rejoicing, that matters. So if you ask me, does it matter? 
outside the walls of this place? Heck yeah, it matters. It matters because there's a place where we can find hope and joy in a community that gathers together and supports one another, that works for peace and justice and wholeness through the Holy Spirit, not just inside the walls of the church, but outside the walls of the church. Yes, it matters. And I hope that we become the church that is a beacon for those things, not just through our worship service or not just through the things that happen here, but that we would be the place where everybody knows there's disciples of Jesus there that are changing the world because it matters. Amen? Amen.